Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi's story began in Zurich, Switzerland, 1746. His father, also named Johann, died when Pestalozzi was very young, so he was brought up by his mother. He had no masculine influence at home, so when Pestalozzi started school with other boys, he had no idea how to play their rough games. The boys teased him about it often. Pestalozzi was thirsty for knowledge. The wish to be acquainted with some branches of knowledge that took hold of my heart and my imagination, even though I neglected the means of acquiring them, was nevertheless enthusiastically alive within me. The older Pestalozzi became, the thirstier for knowledge he became. He wanted to become a pastor like his grandfather, but took up law instead. For unknown reasons, Pestalozzi gave up. He took up farming instead in order to live the natural life. Shortly after he started the farm, he met and married a young woman named Anne. Pestalozzi first started to create his educational methods with their son. When the son was three years old, Pestalozzi wrote, I drew his attention to some water which ran swiftly down a slope. I walked a little lower and he followed me, saying to the water, Wait a minute, I will come back soon. Shortly afterwards, I took him to the bank of the same stream again, and he exclaimed, Look, the water comes down too. It runs from there and goes down and down. As we followed the course of the stream, I repeated several times to him, Water flows from the top of the hill to the bottom. This is where the object lesson was born. Pets Pestalozzi learned that children need to be taught through a connection rather than rote memorization. He said, Why have I been so foolish as to allow him to pronounce these important words without taking care to connect them at the same time? Pestalozzi also learned that the teacher's attitude affects the student response. A child learns by activity, by imitating, by drawing, by collecting, and above all, by observing nature. Pestalozzi said, When he hears a bird sing or an insect hum on a leaf, then you should stop talking. Pestalozzi wanted to help the poor. It was common in the day for farmers to take up stray children as slave labor. It was not this way with Pestalozzi. He took in 20 children, but instead of making them into slaves, he taught them reading, writing, and arithmetic. He only had them help around the farm enough to sustain it by spinning cotton and working the fields. The children learned fast and were very happy. The project grew. Things went well until parents started to meddle, eventually bringing things crashing down around Pestalozzi's ears. He was left penniless. If it wasn't for his friends, he would have lost the house too. The next 18 years were spent in poverty, thinking and writing. Foundations of Pestalozzi's philosophies were developing during this time. Pestalozzi wrote a book, Leonard and Gertrude, about his ways of teaching, which earned him a gold medal from the Agricultural Society. He promptly sold the medal. The new Swiss government came into power about 1798. Shortly after, the French army destroyed the town stands on their way to attack Austria. This was just the opportunity Pestalozzi needed to take up teaching the poor again. Because there was no building that could accommodate the 80 children at stands, they adopted a convent for their purposes. Both the poor and former rich were there. My children soon became more open, more converted, and more susceptible to every good and noble influence than anyone could possibly have foreseen. I have incomparably less trouble to develop those children whose minds were still blank than those who had already acquired inaccurate ideas. The impression of weariness which habitually reigns in schools vanished like a shadow from my classroom. They willed, they had power, they persevered, they succeeded, and they were happy. The project was brought to a halt when the French army retreated and took over the convent as a military hospital. This brought another opportunity for Pestalozzi. He started teaching at Verdun, a budding school. The schoolmaster let Pestalozzi have a free hand. It wasn't eight months before the school was transformed by his methods. Pestalozzi lived to be 80 years old. Even in his 70s, he was still trying to help the poor. He also wrote, but was not satisfied with just writing. He taught, negotiated, and was elected president of the Helvetic Society. He was working up until the day he died. Pestalozzi taught for the children rather than himself. The curriculum was hands-on and very active. Pestalozzi himself had been a hands-on child. He couldn't sit still, he said. Can't you sit still at all? Can't you keep your hands still at all? These were the words I had to hear permanently. I was not a person to sit still. I could not keep my hands still, and the more I should do so, the less I could. If I could not find anything else, I took a cord and twisted it until it did not look like a cord any longer. Pestalozzi's methods were meant to aid the development that came naturally to the students. The teacher was only a guide to help that curiosity. Each child had his own unique talents to develop. Pestalozzi connected his teaching to real experiences. He involved the parents and the home life. He 
taught a balance of using the head, heart, and hands. The head meant to understand things. The heart meant learning about what one wants to learn. The hands meant doing good work and developing physically. The most important part of Pestalozzi's method was that he taught by love. Love was the source of his authority. Fear of the teacher was done away with. Pestalozzi changed the way schools taught. His hands-on method was much more effective than the ways of rote memorization that were being used before. Fear of the teacher was done away with. Starting a new method of teaching by love. Things changed so that school was fun. Hands-on activities that involved real-world experiences were used. Pestalozzi's methods influenced Frederick Froebel, the founder of kindergarten. Modern kindergarten is the best example of Pestalozzi's influence today. In kindergarten, you did many things with your hands. An exercise I remember best happened at our school track. The teacher asked us to run to see how fast we were. Then the teacher asked us to hold a piece of paper against the wind and run again. I ran significantly slower. I learned about wind resistance in a way I wouldn't forget. Another part of kindergarten is how much the teachers love their students. There is no way to sufficiently describe how loving the teachers are. They think every one of their students is the sweetest. There are many fond memories of kindergarten. The impact Pestalozzi has on me is to help me understand how to teach students in a way they won't forget. One of my favorite and most memorable lessons in my intro to theater class follows the pattern. Our class went to several areas of the snow building to simulate types of stages. A volunteer performed improvisation in each of the areas. In the arena theater, we were too far away to be able to help the hurt performer. In the proscenium stage, we were too distant to care about what the actor had to say. But in a flexible space theater, with the actor right next to you, there was fear. I will never forget the impact space has on an audience. I was there. It was real. This is the kind of thing I want to share with my future students. I want them to connect with the subject and take it deep into their heart where it is never forgotten. I can do that because of Pestalozzi's ideas.